Chaos Shuffle is by far the best thing that's happened to Dead by Daylight in a very long time. Let's talk about why. Before we get into it, let me introduce myself. My name is The Crow Show, home of the smoothest voice on Twitch. Now what's Chaos Shuffle? Let's talk about it. So here's a breakdown that Dead by Daylight released. I'm loving these graphics they've been releasing lately. So you can choose your item as well as the add-ons and you can choose any offering you want and all maps are available. Perks are randomly selected when entering the trial so you don't know what you're getting until you're actually loaded in. All four perk slots are unlocked and all perks are unlocked at the third tier so you don't have to like level up all the perks and for anybody that wants to try out perks that maybe you don't have available to you, you can actually get them in this mode or this modifier rather. So in that sense, it's very friendly towards newer players that maybe don't have all the perks unlocked or have purchased all the DLC. And once you load into the trial, you can actually hit escape and you can check what perks you have equipped and you can hover your mouse or your cursor over it to see what each perk does because there's about 500 perks in this game. So it's going to be really difficult to memorize every icon and the definition of every perk. And here you can see me doing that as I load into this trial. So I have 4,000 hours. I'm still trying to figure out what some of these perks do. Speaking of perks, let's have a look at nightlight.gg. It's an unofficial website that tracks the most commonly used perks on both sides. And if we look at the top perks for both sides, they all look very familiar. And when you're playing this game for extended periods of time, most killers will be running those top four to five perks. Pain Resonance, Pop Goes the Weasel, Lethal Pursuer, Barbecue and Chili, and Corrupt Intervention. It gets very boring when you're playing against the same perks over and over again. And this modifier fixes that. I don't think I saw Pain Resonance a single time when I was playing this weekend. And that was so refreshing to be able to work on a gen and not have to worry about it getting hit with Pain Resonance. And that creates some really interesting gameplay on both sides. Because killers aren't equipped with the top slowdown perks like Pain Resonance, Pop Goes the Weasel, Corrupt, Surge, etc. They're having to rely on chases to get pressure in game. On the flip side of things, survivors have no control over the perks they're selecting so they're not getting second chance perks like Decisive Strike or Off the Record. They're not getting the strong perks that extend chases like Windows of Opportunity, Life, Resilience, Sprint Burst, Dead Hard, stuff like that, Balance Landing. They're relying on perks maybe they've never used before. Now you take away the strongest perks on both sides and it creates some really interesting opportunities for this game. Because generators aren't getting hit multiple times with Pain Resonance and then Pop Goes the Weasel, I find the games were going really quickly. When I was playing Killer, some of my rounds I felt like they lasted maybe seven, eight minutes. Now the thing is, I try not to tunnel. I try not to focus people. But if you give this community an inch, they'll take a mile. And I'll put some footage up here of scenarios where killers were either tunneling me or tunneling somebody else out. And sadly, my shadow play wasn't working for a lot of the weekends, so I wasn't able to capture all of the footage I wanted. But if you look on Twitter, or X rather, <laughs> you can see a lot of people complaining about killers tunneling and focusing people out early in the game, and that really sucks. But at the same time, it was happening for survivors as well. When I was playing killer, because I didn't have gen defense perks, survivors were slamming gens. Now, if I ran into somebody who knew the tiles really well, knew the map really well, or had windows of opportunity, I ran into that a couple times, they knew exactly where to run, where to pre-drop pallets, and how to extend that chase. So because they were just pre-dropping pallets and maybe I chased for too long, I didn't get to patrol the gens that I, I needed to patrol, I was quite frequently running into scenarios where I would get my fifth or sixth hook and then bam, all five of the generators are fixed and I'm just looking at my build going, man, I would do anything for Jolt or Pop Goes the Weasel or Pain Res, just one of those, even Deadlock I would take. But zero slowdown means that 
when survivors bring really strong toolboxes in and that happened regularly we'll get into that in a little bit but i was losing generators really really fast now that's just a little minor nitpick because from the killer perspective it was refreshing running into trials where i didn't see a single life i didn't see a single decisive striker off the record now because both sides didn't have access to all of the strongest perks in a funny way, it kind of made Dead by Daylight feel like both sides had access to the purest form of skill expression. Now, much of that could be attributed to the fact that survivors had the ability to choose any item and any add-ons to bring into the trial, and simultaneously, killers could bring any add-ons they wanted for the killers. So, depending on the killer you're using, add-ons are very vital and can make your killer really optimized regardless of perks. Now on the flip side for survivors, if you're using a really strong toolbox, you can get a couple of gens fixed really quickly depending on whether you're on comms or just working with efficient other survivors. Uh, or if you have a couple of really good med kits and you're maybe playing against a hit and run kind of killer, you can just heal yourselves. That removes a lot of pressure from the killer. So it creates this interesting dynamic, and I'd be curious to see in the future if Dead by Daylight could make it pure chaos. By removing the ability for killers to choose their own add-ons, and to remove the ability for survivors to choose the add-ons for the items they're bringing in, because that does affect the tempo of the game. If I have any complaints, any feedback for this modifier, is I wish, I wish map offerings weren't a thing on either side. I wish both sides could not bring in map offerings because a map offering can swing things greatly in the favor of either side. And let me tell you, it doesn't feel good when you get a four person stack bringing Area of Crows doing SEAL Team 6 plays on you or bringing Gideon, like that just, it hurts. Hurts my feelings. You don't wanna hurt my feelings, do you? Now, personally, I hope they keep this modifier in the game permanently, or at least extend it, or just, just give us this option. I would love that. I think the whole community feels the same way. Let's have a look at some of the community reaction to this modifier. So let's have a look at Aaron's tweet here. Like this tweet if you want to keep Chaos Shuffle in DBD forever. You can see it has a lot of retweets, a lot of likes, fair number of bookmarks, and a lot of engagement overall. Now, Mandy from Dead by Daylight, lead community manager for community development, posted this tweet. So how is everyone enjoying Chaos Shuffle in Dead by Daylight? What builds have you been getting? I've been having so much fun with the different perks and trying things that I normally wouldn't. Autodidact, anyone? I think it's really refreshing to see Mandy engaging with the Dead by Daylight community. And th there has been a lot of back and forth with Mandy and other Dead by Daylight gamers and content creators, it's really cool to see. If I'm a professional YouTuber, I'll leave a link to this tweet so that you can click it and go interact with it yourself and provide Mandy with some feedback. I really enjoyed this tweet from Lime who said, wish this was a permanent mode to be honest. I also been getting crazy value from Force Hesitation, which I would never run normally. And that's the beauty of this modifier is people are trying out perks they normally wouldn't use because Let's face it, we all have our favorite perks, we all have our favorite builds. So when you're forced to use something else, you can be like, hey, oh, that perk, I like that a lot. Maybe I'll try it. Shelbu raised a really good point here. This game mode has been amazing and it's all I've been playing, allowing players who don't own all the DLCs to randomly, of course, try out perks they don't own yet has been a nice treat for some of my friends. I think this is a really good point and can lead to really good things, especially to newer players in the game, because they might make note of perks that they had access to during this modifier. They might scribble the name down of the perk and find out who's teachable that belongs to, and they go, oh wow, I don't have this chapter, I should add it, I'm gonna unlock it with this person, and then they're gonna go grind that out and unlock it, and maybe they start using new perks. I think that's a victory. I'm a big fan of this modifier, 10 out of 10, would play again. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments and if you watched all the way through, thank you very much. Make sure you leave a like and a comment and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next video.